When I jump off the boat into the water, it's like I've just gone into another world. I can feel the cool water from the currents that are coming in. I can see the light from the sun filtering down into the reef and lighting up the whole reef in front of me. It's an oasis. For almost a billion people around the world, that life, that land, that barrier reef that the coral reef provides allows people to live. But now the ocean is changing so fast and coral reefs are having to deal with unprecedented threats that our conservation and management strategies have to keep pace with the challenges of the 21st century. We now have very little coral cover. Actually, on average, we only have about 2% coral cover throughout Florida's coral reef, meaning that we're basically on the brink of functional extinction. And right now, we are in some ways shooting blind. What we need to do now is we need to figure out ways to help the reef. It's no longer just looking at the reef as a place where we get our food, where we depend on, but we need to save them in order to save ourselves. So, yeah. We conducted market surveys across a diversity of stakeholders. And what we found, there were three common challenges to the growth and development of a coral reef blue economy. There were one, lack of access to data that is understandable and usable to make decisions. The second one is this disconnect between the coarse scale of existing data and the fine scale at which decisions are being made every day. The third is the lack of a platform where all the data, all the information for one coral reef ecosystem is housed, accessed, shared, and digital reefs takes care of all these issues. One way I think about it is like, yes, there's inf this information, but it's almost like it's hidden away in Latin texts that only a handful of people can understand. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get those Latin texts, translate them into language that anyone can understand and that anyone can interact with intuitively. And I think that that's really where the magic happens. And it's a really rewarding uh, thing to see community members, to see partners engaging with their reefs in a way that they couldn't before and be able to make decisions in from a place of, of information wealth rather than potentially a place of information poverty. A digital twin is basically, as it says, a twin of a physical asset but in a digital format. So you can use it to change things without changing the physical world and use it for decision making. So we involve experts of augmented and virtual reality in our team to push the user experience to the next level. It's not only a digital twin for coral reefs, it's actually a platform to help stakeholders to create what-if scenarios and to visualize what-if scenarios in a way so that multiple stakeholders from different disciplines, from the research scientists to the fishermen, can talk to each other with a common visual language and make better decisions faster. We create a lot of visuals uh, with a lot of different options. We can run simulations for 2050, for example, and show the user how that would look different from how it is right now. The technologies we have for both generating new knowledge and getting that information into the hands of people who needed to make decisions, that technology is now available. It wasn't there five years ago. Most of these kids have never gone snorkeling or even diving for that matter. So to see that in, on their phone or in their computer, and they were saying, this is right here. This is right in your backyard. What do you think? And they're just like, wow, that is super cool. So. That level, going up to the fishermen that we spoke to and also our government decision makers that we've spoken to, everybody's accepted today, yes. 
it's all visual. And that's what led me to say, okay, what we need to do is to put all this complicated data together and make it highly visual so that you are in that reef and you can see the currents, not see a number, you can see the currents flowing. You can see the temperature changing. Like you're watching a movie, but it's real. To have all of the data associated within our particular reefs of interest within one area to access immediately, I think would be game changing. If we had all of the environmental data, the history of particular reef sites, or the future projections of what that reef site is gonna look like in years to come in relation to their water quality or climate change, that would allow us to focus on particular reefs of interest that are gonna have the biggest impact and will allow us to put our resources into sites that are gonna be the most likely to survive for decades to come. We have an opportunity now where the technology is in place and we're starting to build these data sets where we can go from being, uh, from being reactive to proactive. And it can give us information like where would we outplant corals so that when they spawn and they have larvae that form from their gametes, where will those gametes end up? Will they help reseed a reef down the line um, so we can be more strategic of where we're putting these corals? This digital twin is all about making the invisible visible. So what we aim to do is to democratize access to that information, to provide that information in a way that is understandable intuitively to a variety of stakeholders. We don't want to just be scientists talking to scientists. That gets you nowhere. You need to have community members who are deeply engaged in this problem, who have a wealth of experience and a wealth of expertise. So you bring together all of these different people and you help them to understand one another, to really address the problems that they're having in a collaborative way. The digital twin will be a game changer because it's not only going to function um, in ways that we can imagine now, but I think it's actually going to be so much more once the twin becomes available to the scientists and stakeholders. We may want to make sure that developments on reefs um, proceed in areas that are, um, you know, will have least impact. Local economies need to grow. Fishermen have to get fish out of the ocean to feed their families. So none of that is going to, that's not going to change. Um, the digital twin will hopefully allow us to do that more efficiently and more sustainably. The state of our future coral reefs really depends on the decisions that we make today. And in order to have a functioning reef, we don't have a choice. We need to start stepping outside of our normal boxes and thinking creatively. And this is one of our exciting first steps in that direction. And we're very confident that our coral reef has a great chance of coming back because of collaborations like this. So I'm optimistic. I'm really optimistic that we can do this that we can not only sustain coral reef ecosystems through the 21st century, but we can keep functional coral reef ecosystems that provide humans with their livelihoods, that provide homes to millions of species. That is that underwater world that I love and want my children and my grandchildren to see. I'm optimistic about that.